Jeez, you're a long way away. Uh, <laughs> welcome to you both. Welcome to you both. Now, first question, how many photos and selfies have you done since you got here at 5.30 tonight? Just a couple. Everyone wanted one with him. I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, I, I actually only did a couple, but <laughs> I think he's been busy. So, Joe, one of the rare occasions you actually do take the green jacket off. One of the rare occasions? Yeah, do you just wear it all the time? Do you I wear sleep it on with it. Oh, you're good on you. <laughs> well, you deserve it. You deserve my, wife, it. my wife asked me to take it off when I go to the shower, and I said, well, maybe, I think it's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know it's clean. Scotty, where's, where's your jacket? At home somewhere? No, I know. I miss it. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's still hanging up in the locker. So uh, it, is, it is nice to see the green jacket back down here in Australia, though, for sure. And uh, really happy Sergio's here to play this week. It's very exciting. I think the sure. entire country has been waiting for him to come down. And uh, it's a big moment for us this year in Australian golf. Sure. Sergio, what was your, what was your yeah, indeed. When was your first visit to Australia? My first visit? Yeah. I want to say, um, I want to say 2000. Uh, and I think I played, I played actually with Adam uh, practice round, who's still an amateur. Um, He's older than me. <laughs> not much, but <laughs> I did turn pro before he did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember we played a practice round together. Uh, we had a lot of fun, uh, obviously. They told me about about him, and uh, you know, obviously, I could see after we played that practice round that uh, he was going to be, you know, an, uh, an amazing player uh, like he's he's been his whole career. And you know, I've just been trying to catch up every four years. After he wins a big tournament, then I win it four years after. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, the one thing about your Masters victories was that you both had to endure a playoff to claim the title. Sergio, I'll start with you, 2017. What's it like mentally for a player who's played the best golf he can for 72 holes and then realise he's got to go out again to win the title? How do you handle that pressure? Well, um, funny enough for me, um, this year it was, I don't know, it was, it was different. It was, um, I obviously had a great chance to win on the 72nd hole uh, after I hit a great second shot there on, on 18. Uh, unfortunately, mis misread the putt, and but I, you know, I walked off the green. I saw my my future wife, my wife now, but my fiance at that time, Angela, and you know, a couple of the things. Obviously, I was I was I was still thinking positively. Uh, I was I was like, you know, you're playing well, you're playing great, just keep going. But I saw her there, just at the back of the green, and instead of telling me, oh, you know, I'm lucky, oh, come on, you can do it, or whatever. She just gave me a low five and said, you got this. And I was like, you know what, yeah. You know, I, I, it, was, it was like a boost of confidence. It wasn't like a, seeing, seeing someone that you love and you care about and being like, you know, negative in, in, in a way of, oh, you know, I'm sorry, you missed it, come on, you can do it, or something like that. So, so that really helped a lot, and, uh, you know, I got, I got on the 18th tee again, and, and, and I, I kept telling myself, come on, you, you're playing great, you're going to win this thing, just go out there, make birdie, and, and, and don't worry about what Justin's going to do. So, um, you know, fortunately enough, I hit a great drive, I hit a great second shot, and, and I made the putt. I didn't need the putt, but I made it, which, which I wanted to do it, and, you know, it was, uh, the rest is history. <laughs> Adam, can I ask you about your memories of the playoff against Aguil Cabrera? Yeah, it's... Um it's a little bit like that. I think you're in a position where you've played so well for 72 holes and you get there. The nerves are far less, I think, than people might imagine. Obviously, very confident. And in a similar way, I guess, both Sergio and I had chances before that moment to win majors and it didn't go our way. And then just that belief, you know, only positive things in the mind. Uh, I was very happy to be in a playoff to try and win a major, and you just get to that point where you want it so bad, you'll just make it happen. And you know, Sergio hit this great drive and a second shot that is of the highest quality, and that's kind of how I felt it went going down the tenth hole with Cabrera. I mean, he did as well. Unfortunately, he didn't win, but 
I, I hit good shots too, and my putt went in and, and won. So uh, you just want it so badly, and you're in that zone in that moment, and you make it happen. So, yeah, it must have meant a lot to you to be the third Spaniard to have won a Masters after Sebiano Barristeros and Jose Maria Alotabo. Uh, but given also the significance, it was Sevi's 60, would have been his 60th birthday when he won the Masters. It, it must have been a very emotional moment for you. It was. Uh, it was for many reasons. Obviously, for everything that was going on, uh, my, my dad was, you know, uh, on the moon. Uh, Obviously, my mom, Angela, we were all very, uh, very emotional. But at the same time, like you said, um, it would have been Sevi's 60th birthday uh, on that on that same day, and and it did uh, it did cross my mind, think about him uh, a couple of times here and there, and maybe in a couple of shots uh, during the week that, you know, in the past, they would have hit the bank and go in the water and, and this time they stayed and I made birdie on like on 13 on Saturday, I think it was something like that. So, um, you know, even even the shot on, on 15 on Sunday, you know, uh, another time instead of bouncing and hitting, hitting the pin and, and going to 12 feet, you know, it flies on the pin and goes in the water and, and all of a sudden you're, you're standing here without the green jacket. So um, I think it was just meant, meant to happen. Uh, it was meant to be, and uh, you know, I wanna, I wanna think that probably saw Sevi kind of gave me a little hand uh, from, from up there. I'm sure he did. Now I'm going to ask you about Spanish sports stars, because when you think about it, um, did you say sports stars or porn stars? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> We'll do one now, one the later on in the night, if you like. <laughs> but just thinking, um, Rafael Nadal, the age of 31, is back as the world number one. You've got one of the top women tennis players in Garvin Muguruza. Great cyclists, wonderful footballers. You're the chairman of a football club. But I'm looking back when I think of the golf of Ballesteros, Johnny Ram, uh, Olazabo, Cabrera Bello. My favourite, I love him, Miguel Angel Jimenez. <laughs> I just want to play golf with him one day. I won't even play, I'll just walk around with him. <laughs> what is it about Spain that produces such world-class sporting talent? Well, I, I mean, we're not a big country, as, as everyone knows, but, uh, but I think we have great weather, uh, which, which helps a lot. I think that's something that Australia can relate to. Um, I think that uh, our, uh, our projects, uh, our programs, uh, unit programs are, are quite good. And uh, that, that's probably why you can see, you know, so many great sportsmen coming out. And um, I guess it's, it's also been, you know, we've been fortunate. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's probably a little bit of our charisma and our hot blood and, you know, all, all the uh, energy and, and, you know, everything that we have. So, um, it works for good and for bad, but uh, when, when it's good, it's really good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Adam, we've seen in the past week uh, some outstanding young Australian talent emerging. Are we seeing now the new crop of the, the Adam Scotts and the Jason Days, do you think? Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's the Adam Scotts and the Jason Days. Um, that means I'd be getting a bit old, Craig, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm framing it in a way... Jason, that certainly. <laughs> you, look back, you look back at seeing these guys, 21-22, yeah, sure. Australian Open winner at the age of 22. I mean, that's yeah, just a terrific absolutely. performance. Uh, to see an Aussie win the Aussie Open at 22, I mean, he for sure, we've got to tag him as a next superstar. No pressure. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> but uh, it's been since Aaron Baddeley, probably, sure. we've had an Aussie that young win. I know Jordan Spieth and Rory won... Uh, and we all know what they're capable of. So, you know, the world is now his oyster and we'll all be watching very closely. It was you know, such an impressive final round. So to me, as I look at that, obviously he plays good, but he's got this ability to shoot low scores at big moments. That's, not everyone has that, you know, that ability to just keep making birdies and keep, get the score out of their mind and just go as low as they possibly can when they're feeling hot. And that's a really great attribute to sure. have because you can't teach that to some people and uh, future looks bright for him for sure. And I've played some golf with Curtis Luck and Brett Coletta this year overseas and they're now finding their feet over there. So yeah, I think as far as 
turning out talent, Australia is still doing a really good job and uh, these guys have gotten off to a great start. Absolutely. So, yeah, 2017 will be an absolute watershed year for you, as we would say. A master's green jacket, a beautiful wife and family on the way. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's uh, this time on, on that on that big one, I'm not four years behind you, uh, but, cl but close. close. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it's, it, has been, it has been an amazing year. Uh, like you said, on and off the golf course uh, with, with everything, with um, all, all the wins we've, we've had, but, uh, but also getting married and, you know, uh, my beautiful wife. We're expecting a, a beautiful girl. So um, just like Adam, First one, two. It was a girl. <laughs> just, I'm just copying him. <laughs> um, no, so it's uh, extremely exciting. Uh, looking forward to next March uh, when when she'll be she'll be with us, and you know uh, we're we're gonna try to do the best the best job possible and make sure that we raise her the uh, the best way we can. I hope you've planned it meticulously that uh, when the beautiful girl is due that you're not leading by five shots and going into the final round of a major tournament somewhere around the world and have to scoot off to hospital to be there. If, if that's what's meant to happen, I'll be there. Good you know, man. It's, there's, uh, I, don't think, I don't think there's anything more, more important than uh, seeing the birth of your child and uh, you, know, you, you can get to win many tournaments and majors and, and things like that. So. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't go to that, but it doesn't come <laughs> to that, but, but if it does, you know, I'll be there. That's it. <laughs> Adam, has, has fatherhood changed you in the way that you approach life, uh, golf and family? Yeah, absolutely. I have, I feel like I've got less time to do everything, that's for sure. <laughs> Le less time to sleep, for a start, <laughs> and then less time to do everything. It's a, bi it's a big change. It's a great change, but sure. of course, uh, like everyone adapting to having kids is a big change in your life and where I feel like I'm right in the thick of it at the moment with two kids under three. <laughs> There's lots going on at home and uh, it's a lot of good fun, good fun times. Don't worry, mate, you'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, enjoy that because I'll be, I'll be another four years ahead. <laughs> but uh, it is really fantastic and, uh, you know, all those things, Sergio will find out, and Angela, that you know, spending that time together is so important, Fantastic. and making adjustments to my schedule, and having to change priorities here and there throughout the year. You just got to go with it on the fly, but it's all really so rewarding. Just go with the flow. Well, gentlemen, uh, Sergio, your opinion of the course? Um, I'm sure you've had a pretty good look at the layout here at Royal Pines. I haven't played yet, so. <laughs> It looks uh, great. It looks great from the, from the, room. the, from the room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, Adam can give you a few tips because you guys are playing in the Pro-Am tomorrow, of course, but then on Thursday, you're off the 10th tee as the second group. So what's going on here? Two of the big draw cards, and you're both going to be out there at 10 past six on a Thursday morning. It's going to be great for the golf fans. Did you ask to play together? I'm used to getting up early. I don't know about uh, you, yeah. but I'll, I'll be right. Here in Queensland, we uh, get up pretty early. You know, the sun had been up for two hours by yeah. then, I think. So, we'll be it gets up. it gets light like at 4:15 or 4:30. No. So, <laughs> I know, it's That's no problem. No, it'll be great, and we're playing with Wade as well, who's yeah. a mate of mine and uh, great. Good week in Hong Kong. Week, so, yeah. just one last week. So, yeah. So, uh, it's going to be a good couple of days for sure, and um, we're all going to be facing a one of the best fields ever at the PGA, sure. I think, really, this year. So um, there's going to be a lot of good golf out here this week. Yeah, very there exciting. Is. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys in action. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasure to have these two wonderful Masters champions Thank and you. maybe a PGA champion, Sergio Garcia Thanks. and Adam Scott joining us. Thanks, guys.